things over and over again. So I decided to do something uh, as different as I could manage, you know. At first it, w it had to do with much shorter musical ideas uh, strung end to end, like this album after something anything had. It was a single album with like 23 songs on it. And then after and 48 that, minutes on a side or yeah. something like that. Huh? And then the uh, album after that was um, a double album with like 14 songs on it. So then I started moving into longer musical structures. And uh, a lot of my albums have just sort of been a, a mixture of those, of long musical structures and shorter musical structures. And uh, not only the length, but the, um, the harmonic and uh, lyrical content were not necessarily mainstream pop. Um, subject matter, uh, so uh, so uh, you know I've been satisfied to do things that satisfy me musically that are not necessarily commercial. Now, at one point, you were sort of—I I think the image of Todd was kind of the the, the, the wizard in the studio, you know, doing everything himself and being able to do a lot of overdubs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now you've obviously gotten part of a band. Mm -hmm. How did it come to be that you have a band that you're playing with? Well, the band started a long time ago. started uh, just around the album After Something Anything. And uh, it's taken a long time for people to recognize the band as a, as a unit, you know, as a separate identity from myself. And uh, I my main interest in doing that was to have uh, was to be part of a performing unit rather than a recording unit. I mean, it's not to say we can't make records, but but uh, we wanted to be able to uh, I wanted to be able to duplicate some of the recorded sounds live. You know, have players that can play that well, you know, and have a, and, and comprehend the uh, different kinds of sounds that are needed. To reproduce some of that recorded material, so started out as that, you know, and now it's become a more or less independent performing unit. We make our own records and we have our own concerts. Well, let's get back and talk to Roger and hear a little bit more about Utopia and, and what that's all about. Well, let's hear some Utopia music first. On UXRT in Chicago, uh, there's still plenty of seats left uh, for bluesman John Mayall at the New Ivanhoe tomorrow night only. Tickets are at Ticketron and the New Ivanhoe box office at 3000 North Clark. Call 348-4060 for more information. We'll be back to talk to Todd and, and Roger in just a minute. The original, Ro Roger, as a, a member of the Utopia, how did you happen to uh, come to know Todd? How did you become a part of the group? Well, I had, uh, I had a keyboard background. I'd studied classical piano and so forth, went through the obligatory lessons for childhood, and then got interested in other forms of music, and uh, eventually ended up in Boston working for the ARP Synthesizer Company, and learned the ins and outs of synthesizers. I put out a solo record on Atlantic, it was called Cosmic Furnace, which is basically uh, synthesized jazz rock, and uh, I guess the album had been out for about a year, and uh, I was sort of knocking around in Boston, I'd, I'd left my job and was just doing odd concerts here and there. And uh, I heard about Utopia, I guess they heard about me, and somebody called and said, come on down and see the band at Central Park in New York. So I did that, and I saw these six guys on the stage going crazy and playing all this wild music, and I said, uh, fine, uh, let me join, <laughs> and uh, let, me, let me go crazy too, yeah. and I've been going crazy ever since. Now, there's been some... Pretty, I mean, pretty outrageous things that uh, Utopia or Todd, I mean, you've done on stage as a, a theatrical thing. Are you still doing things that are as uh, outrageous? Uh, well, in our own way. It's all <laughs> relative, man, you know. Uh, I guess so. I suppose, you know, in terms of stage, I, I don't, we can't, we're not as outrageous as, say, the Parliament Funkadelics. But uh, as far as most band go, fans go, we do some pretty strange things. Yes. There is a lot of attention paid to the setting, you know, what the, the actual concert looks like to people. It's more of a, of a show than it is, you know, people just standing up and sort of just playing instruments. Do you still use the pyramid as part of the set? Yeah, we oh, yes. do. How long have you been using the pyramid? Only since uh, March, February, March of this year. 
Do you have any belief in the spiritual benefits of pyramids? Um, well, I suppose if it's spiritually benefic beneficial, you don't have to believe in it. You know, it just does or it doesn't. It's just, uh, I, I don't know whether we're trying to uh, give scientific credence to any of that stuff. I mean, does it keep your guitar in tune or anything like that? It definitely doesn't, doesn't help do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, one of the things about the pyramid is it has to be aligned in the proper direction, and most stages are not facing the right direction, you know, so we can't, we can't give any guarantee as far as that's uh, concerned. But um, we, like, we like to apply it as more, more or less an archetypal symbol of um, geometric strength <laughs> or whatever that... Uh, um, I mean, it has, it has many more applications than just, uh, you know, keeping your tomatoes fresh, things like that. Or, or petrifying your tomatoes, depending on what you want to do with it. We don't discount, you know, certain properties that it may have, but uh, we're not going to, you know, go out and tell people blatantly, yes, it will do this or it will do that. You really have to sort of experiment on your own. You know? uh, there's certainly a, a, a cosmic overturn to a lot of what you do. Either you know, through the implications of a pyramid or the use of some of the images on the albums. Mm -hmm. One album was Ra, and that has sort of an Egyptian connotation to it. Mm -hmm. um, this album, oops, wrong planet. Uh, how did that come about? The, that particular title? Yeah. That was just one of a number of titles that we, uh, that we wrote down on a piece of paper <laughs> at the last minute right. and gave to the record company to... Uh, to pick one out because we we had thought about it so long that we couldn't be objective any longer about what the title would be for the album and uh, that seemed to pop out so that became the album title uh, I mean obviously from that you could sort of say well hey you know um, you know are you part of the, are you part of this planet or are you part of something else uh, well I think, <laughs> I think everybody gets that feeling at some point you know, hasn't hasn't got anything to do in one sense with whether whether you that you have options on other planets. Um, it has to do with the fact that that uh, the, that the world is a certain way, and and everybody seems to think that it should be another way. You know, so why is it this way? You know, and. Uh, and oops is the <laughs> oops is the answer. Just a lot of times you wake up, you know, and you you go out and you try to do this or that, and you get faced with certain bureaucratic hassles with institutions and this and that, and you just sometimes say, "Whoops, you know, I must be on the wrong planet." Hmm. Uh, Todd, as somebody who's um, who's been in the band, done a lot of stuff on your own, and been part of a, of a group, when you were on your own. There was this this image of, of you know the wizard a true star. It was almost you know something that would seem to be turning you into a Hercules, uh, a musical Hercules. Right. Um, do you prefer the band as opposed to the the solo efforts you were doing? Um, I don't prefer it. It's just another aspect. You know, it's like uh, the difference between this band and other bands is that rather than starting out as a band and all the individuals. Um, achieving individual recognition afterwards, you know, or, or, or engaging in individual projects afterwards. Most everybody in the band had some kind of individual direction beforehand. You know, and uh, we got together as a band to do something different, you know, not necessarily to negate what we do as individuals, but to do something that's not possible to do as individuals. So, um, so we'll continue to do the do things that we do as a band for the for the advantages that that gives us, and then we'll also continue to work as individuals for the uh, obvious freedom that we have. In that. Do either of you two have particular projects on tap now? Yeah, um, I have. Uh, in fact, I think they're going to release a single from some tracks I recorded in England. Um, Actually, they think it's going to be a disco smash over there. <laughs> it was a synthesizer record. Uh, and I'm probably going to do some more recording of that type of material this winter if we have some time off. And I think Todd's been working on some stuff. I'm doing a few things. Um, not yet uh, completed, but uh, when we get some time, I'll probably finish it up. Hmm. I have a number of projects in mind, not all of which are, uh, not all of which have to do with records. Some have to do with other media of expression, like, uh, like film or uh, video, film, things like that. Hmm. 
still a, a space age uh, wizard, a true star. Huh? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, what can you say to a question yeah, like that? Right? Put you on the spot. No argument for me. <laughs> are you as great as everybody says you are? You know, I don't what, know. How great do they say? Yeah. <laughs> if you say no, then you disillusion right. everybody. If you say yes, you sound uh, totally vain, right? It's all like, you know. It's not. That's not important. You know. It's like oh, most people will never know. How great we really are. How great we are. Yeah, most people never know you personally. You know, it's just all speculation that they have. You know, on the from looking at the products of your work or whatever. You know, but it's, you know, I always feel that everyone has a has a potential that uh, that if they felt a certain way about themselves, you know, they they would be able to amaze amaze yourself and your friends. You know, <laughs> it's like that. Flush yourself down the drain. It's one of the sort of uh, it's just that people, are, I think they, they settle too easily into a rut, you know, they settle too easily into something that will just give them financial security or, you know, uh, just an unchallenging lifestyle. Yeah, something that doesn't really, uh, you know, like the kind of like being a musician, you know, and being involved in this business and being subject to the criticism that, you know, that everyone, uh, you know, find so easy to come up with, you know, and 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 the fact that you're dependent on the general public to uh, to maintain your livelihood, it's much more uh, it's a much more dicey existence, you know, than uh, I suppose working for General Motors or something. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, nowadays it's probably not as <laughs> dicey as working for General Motors, but you know, you could like, just get a job and work for your pension, you know, for. 30 or 40 years. Well, it's really interesting because it's, it's apparent by listening to your records to see the growth that, that you've gone through, the challenges that you've set for yourself as a musician. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's obvious that you keep challenging yourself to, to try and, you know, move out and explore and refine what you're doing. Well, that's more or less a personal philosophy in music. There's a whole other category of music that's simply pop art, you know, in which you play it as safe as possible in order to maintain a certain record sales, you know, and subsequent income, you know, security. But to me, that doesn't, that to me doesn't last as long in certain ways. You know, like people that try to, that continually try to experiment or continually try to find new things remain more vital than the people who, who learn how to do one thing that eventually goes out of style, you know, and then they're stuck with you know, whatever, they could just play little bars all over the country, you know, and become a more or less a musical oddity, oddity, you know. Eventually they get into a revival show, eventually, you know, something like that. Well, I hope whatever it is that you keep moving towards keeps being interesting, you know. Well, I hope it keeps moving away. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, thank, thank you, Todd, thank you, Roger, both thank for you. stopping by and yeah. spending some time with us this afternoon, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.